All right. Uh, hello. Thank you for coming at this ridiculously early time in the morning at 1130. Um, I am Kaz. Uh, we're talking about physical drive-by downloads, and uh, I'll explain what that means in just a second. Uh, oh, actually, I'm going to do this before I put up my company slide. Um, oh, the battery's dead. No, it's not. Never mind. I'm good. All right. Uh, whoever was at the club last night, fuck you, because today's going to suck for me. So... All right, now now I can talk about the company thing. <laughs> All right, so uh, name is Kyle Osborne. I'm a pen tester at AppSec Consulting. Um, we're a tiny little web, uh, not web shop. We, we do, we're a tiny little pen testing shop. We do the you know, general web app, pen network, uh, a little bit of physical. Um, we have a PCI sort of st side of stuff uh, in the US. And you know, we just, we're a tiny little place. We have fun breaking shit, and it's fun. Uh, OK, so jump right into it. Um, Android user ecosystem, um, and uh, yeah, so uh, basically there is a huge focus on sucking. Um, it's pretty much like, hey, I'm going to make myself as insecure as possible. Let's do it. Um, so there's a big focus on rooting phones. I mean, everybody wants to have root on their phones, right? Because you can do fun stuff. You can install apps. You can customize shit. You can... Uh, in the U.S., we have um, uh, the carriers, the ISP, or not ISPs, the cellular carriers don't let, let you tether without paying an extra amount of money, uh, which is ridiculous. It's like uh, an extra 30 U.S. dollars just to tether your phone to, and I got to stop, stop exhaling, uh, extra like 30 bucks to tether your phone to your laptop so you can use your phone's internet. Like, it's ridiculous fees. Uh, but when you get root, you're just like, fuck them, I can tether all I want, no big deal. So we, a lot of people tether. Uh, there's a lot of untested ROMs. So there are a lot of people running around and being like, oh, hey, look, CyanogenMod is cool. Like, you know, somebody put tons of stuff in CyanogenMod and it does a bunch of neat things. Oh, by the way, here's the unofficial port of CyanogenMod. You know, install it on your random phone that nobody's ever heard of. Uh, a lot of APKs being passed around. So APKs are basically the Android package files for... Um, for applications, uh, so in the uh, again in the U.S. we have um, Verizon who sucks and they don't like uh, Google Wallet, which I know you guys don't have Google Wallet. Sucks for you guys, but I love Google Wallet being in the U.S. Uh, uh, so Verizon basically says you can't have Google Wallet because of some sort of BS insecurity thing. When re and oops, when in reality they just don't want you having specific applications because they know either one, you know, you can tether with them or two, uh, they have a better product, I'm sorry, better product to give you so they prevent you from using it. So a bunch of people are like, oh yeah, here's the unofficial version of Google Wallet and uh, who, uh, it's unofficial, who the hell knows, you know, what's in there. Uh, and you know APKs are signed by the developer. You can you, you sign them to install them, and then when you install them, it's all like, oh yeah, by the way, hey, this is an un. Uh, you actually have to go into settings and allow um, uh, set a policy to allow um, packages to be in si side loaded. And uh, nobody nobody, has, nobody knows how to verify that they are signed by the dev developer. Um, and it's just bad security habits. Like we're all here about. Security. We all uh, actually. I'm going to go into that a little bit with uh, Android, but um, yeah. Anyway, shitty security habits. All right. Uh, I did a little poll, um, a little survey. Only 500 users or so. Um, but of those 500 users, and uh, so this was off of Reddit. I'm sure some of you guys know Reddit. Um, there were about 500 users that answered this on the subreddit Android uh, or Android subreddit. And 70% of them were rooted, because everybody loves being rooted. 56% um, had ADB enabled. And ADB is, we're basically going to rape ADB today. Um, ADB is the Android debug bridge. It's pretty much awesome, and you can do lots of cool things. And, uh, you know, it's also pretty shitty, because it makes you super insecure. Uh, 76, don't dis uh, disable a custom ROM, so that's, or I'm sorry, dis uh, custom recovery, so that's a um, Clockwork Mod or TWRP, or that's anything that you use to reboot your phone to flash uh, stuff. And then, um, you know, 80, almost 90% don't use encryption. Like, who, who does that? How do you not use encryption? But, 
you know, uh, Android didn't support encryption until like 3.2 and then 4.0, and a bunch of people are still stuck on 2.3. So it kind of sucks. Um, 41% use slide to unlock, so they don't use a password. You just, boop, your phone's open. No big deal. Uh, and then of those, uh, of the uh, surveyed, 22 use the gesture unlock. And uh, you know the gesture thing. It's all like, hey, oh, this is an iPhone, so ignore that for a second. They're like, hey, look, you uh, swiped your fingers like this, so I'm going to do the same thing, and now your phone's unlocked. Uh, and then 40% used some sort of security software, antivirus, or remote tracking and wiping, whatever. Um, so let's conduct our own survey. Uh, who has Android here? Hands up. OK. This is, this is much better. I was in um, Miami at a, another conference. I won't mention the name. Um, but only three people in the audience of this side had Android. And that should give you an idea of what type of conference that was. Um, anyway, so of those people that have Android, who's rooted? Who, who has root? Who has, all right, all right, a few of you. Oh, man, you should all root. Rooting is the way to go. Um, Okay, do you guys have uh, any sort of custom recover or custom um, ROM like Sanage and Mod or AOKP? Just one, two, Jeez, the three, four. What the fuck's wrong with you all? Um, all right, so now you guys and some of the other guys. Um, who has ADB enabled? Like, can if you installed Sanage and Mod or yeah, Sanage and Mod or AOKP, and you didn't go in and disable it? You still have ADB enabled, and you know I hope by the end of the talk you'll go through and be like, oh, I should, I'm gonna disable that now. Anyway. All right, real quick, uh, browser, uh, Android security. So you know there are like browser exploits, uh, application exploits. Uh, there, there were a few kernel exploits. Um, Mempo Dipper is one of the exploits that heavily affected a lot of uh, phones and applications. Um, and it's an awesome, like, when you f if you're a pen tester and you find a server that has, I don't remember what kernel version is, but has of that kernel version, and you're like, oh, shit, Mempo Dipper works. It's, it's instant root. It's great. Uh, ADB exploits, so race conditions or, or whatever else. Uh, and then, of course, there are exploits created by vendors. Uh, so oh, a little bit ago, um, Samsung decided that they were going to install Keys, which is their phone management tool, onto a bunch of people's phones or something like that, and it created a root exploit. So it was, you know, useful for the users, I guess, but it made them super insecure, which kind of sucks, I guess. <clears throat> okay, I'm a little bit behind, so I'm going to rush through some of this stuff. So uh, our goals, um, I'm not, nothing here is super awesome, leet, whatever. I'm not releasing like any crazy exploits or anything. I basically just took a bunch of shit and threw it together and called it cool because it is cool. Uh, so we want, real quick, we want the sensitive stuff. Uh, we want your passwords, we want your emails, we want your text messages, we want your photos, because you all know what sort of photos are on phones, right? And text messages. And and anything we else, anything else we can get. Um, and then we want to, Maintain persistence. We want to go, all right, so I, I, I stole all your sensitive information. Now I'm going to pop something on there so I don't ever have to worry about it again, and all that stuff just, just gets sent to me. That's what we want. Uh, so we want a rootkit or some sort of evil APK. And we want to do this really, really fast. We just want to be, we want to do this as fast as possible. And basically, uh, we want to get past this. I'm sure you all at least recognize that screen. Uh, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Oh, uh, and I also foobarred my uh, test account. So we're actually going to do this with my real account, which sucks. Anyway, um, OK, so uh, we're going to talk about it, the talk is physical drive by download. So we're going to talk a little bit about physical access to a device. Everybody knows you access a laptop, you guys know what to do with a, a laptop. Like when you get a laptop or a computer and you have physical access, you boot up something to either crack the password of Windows or change the password of Windows. You use some sort of uh, recovery software. You do some forensic stuff. You pull sensitive information off. We're going to talk a little bit about that with Android. Um, OK, so uh, the secure bootloader. Uh, so basically. I imagine you all know what a bootloader is. It's kind of makes sense, you know. It 
loads shit and it starts at boot. Um, the secure bootloader is basically uh, on Android phones. When, when you have a secure bootloader, that basically means, uh, oh yeah, you can't boot anything that isn't signed by whoever, right? Um, and then you have a stock recovery partition. So uh, the, the recovery partition is basically used, and we'll go over this. Recovery partition is basically used for encrypting things or over the air updates or whatever. Uh, and by stock, it, it just, if you don't change it, it's pretty secure. Like there's not a whole lot of things you can do with it when it's a stock bootloader. It just doesn't do anything. I'm sorry, stock recovery, it just doesn't do anything. Um, of course, I don't need to iterate. You know, encryption prevents access to the data when it's you know cold booted. Uh, keyguard, keyguard is basically the interface that you see when you, you know, have your PIN number or PIN or password or gesture unlock, um, and then ADB. And ADB is the one we're really gonna kind of uh, you know kick a little bit because we like it. All right, uh, so all those things work together: encryption, stock partition, bootloader, whatever. Um, you know, one of those failures basically means that your shit's owned. All right. So again, uh, secure bootloader. Not all devices have a locked bootloader. Um, real quick, I don't. We prob guys probably didn't get that. Um, you guys know the HP touchpad. Remember, an HP was all like, "Oh, we have a tablet, and we're cool now," and then. They sucked, so they just fire sailed all their tablets for really, really cheap, uh, and they discontinued WebOS. Did any of you grab one of those tablets, the HP touchpad? Yeah, I didn't think so. Um, so I grabbed a f like two of them, and then I sold one, or I traded one for an iPad or something. Um, I had one, though, for a while, and I, st I still kind of play with it every once in a while. But the HP touchpad does not have a secured bootloader. Uh, that means that. I can plug it into the USB, reboot the device, and be like, oh, hey, run this init RAM FS plus this kernel. And it's like, yeah, no problem. I'll run this, you know, whoever the hell you are. I don't, I don't really care. There's no authentication. I'll just go ahead and run this kernel for you. No problem. Uh, the HP Touchpad does not have a secured bootloader, which means that I will never, ever use it as a regular tablet because I will never stick my stuff on there because that shit's insecure. Like, I don't want to... No, that's not cool. Uh, so some bootloaders can be unlocked, like uh, the Galaxy Nexus. So the Galaxy Nexus can be unlocked in just a, uh, a few seconds. Um, the only thing about that is that once the Galaxy Nexus is unlocked, it wipes the, uh, the, the partition. So it wipes the data partition immediately. So even if it is accessed, it immediately wipes all your data when someone tries to unlock it. However, like the HP Touchpad is unsecure and there are other devices which don't have the immediate immediate lock or uh, any immediate wipe uh, and then all those factors prevent cold booting whatever uh, like I said recovery partition you know for encryption and applying over the air updates and whatever system management shit um, encryption um, again rebooting can't access your shit because it's all encrypted no big deal um, it does however use the key guard uh, pin and pass and KeyGuard allows for like a four-digit pin, a pin, and you know, a really small password also. So, you could conceivably crack it pretty easily, you know, assuming that they have a small password. Uh, so this is KeyGuard. It's the whole gesture thing. It prevents immediate access. It, you know, face unlock. <laughs> Does anybody here use face unlock on their Android? <laughs> Did you guys see uh, in 4.1, or I think it was Samsung or whatever, in introduced it where you had to blink? They were all like, oh, yeah, to prevent secure access or whatever. And you have to, so you, you don't point a picture at it. You actually have to blink a few times so it knows that you're actually not a static picture. But some guy got smart, and he was all like, okay, well, I'm going to import my photo to Microsoft Paint. I'm going to take some of my skin from my face then I'm gonna put it over my eyes, and then I'm gonna go back and forth between the pictures so it looks like I'm blinking. And that unlocked face unlock. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, it's it's just a novelty. It doesn't whatever. Uh, like I said earlier, pattern smudges. So you're like, oh yeah, oh look, I unlocked your phone. No big deal. I know weak password and pin is allowed. Uh, th so if you do the gesture unlock, there are about 390,000 uh, possible gestures. Uh, you know, there are nine different points on it. Uh, real quick, I came to that because, okay, so you can't do, uh, I can't, oh man, I need two laser pointers. Uh, so you can't do 
one to three, unless you go through two first, right? Unless you go two, one, three. So uh, it was really easy to get a lot of that stuff out, and you can't repeat numbers. So it basically limits it, limits it to 390,000. And 390,000 seems like a lot, but we're going to talk about that in a second. Um, and then the, it stores a hash in uh, read-only or uh, root readable file only or uh, system user, which you can't generally access. Uh, ADB off, doesn't provide USB debugging, can't connect on phone, whatever. Physical vectors, bootloader, run on lock code, non-stock recovery partition, I'm gonna reboot your phone into recovery and then I'm gonna start stealing stuff off of it because it's non-stock and it is insecure. Uh, lack of encryption, you know, whatever. Uh, ADB enabled, you pretty much win everything. All right, so it's not all about the phone. You know, the phone is great. Lots of data, passwords, text messages, photos, emails, whatever. Um, but it's not the best. But we really want your Google account. And uh, I mentioned that before. We're going to steal everything. Uh, God, I don't even care about this. Unlock bootloader, wipe phone, whatever. May wipe the phone. Requires a reboot. It's slow. It takes a few seconds, whatever. Um, if it's already unlocked, great. You know, you just reboot it. You're set. Um, same thing with custom recovery. If you have a custom recovery, just reboot it. You're set. You can just start stealing stuff off of it. No big deal. All right. Uh, so what I really care about is being really, really fast. Like, uh, all right. I don't. I don't know anything about last night because I don't remember anything about last night. However, if any of you remember last night, um, and any of you have left your bar sitting at a table or left your bar sitting at, or sorry, left your left your phone sitting at a table or left your phone sitting at a bar. Uh, accidentally, and then you've run back and be like, oh shit, you know, I should like secure, you know, put this in my pocket so no one starts looking through my f nasty photos or something. Uh, basically, I want that. Like, I want to be sitting at a bar. I want someone to walk away. I just want to be able to like, plug something into their phone and be like, boop, now I own everything, right? Um, and that's where this thing comes in. So uh, USB OTG, it's a USB on-the-go cable. Um, and this basically is, uh, it turns your phone into a USB host, which is awesome because now I can plug things into it and it's functional as some sort of host device. But, you know, this, this little cable is awesome, but it requires another cable and it, it sucks. So um, the, the guys at Hack5, if you don't know Hack5, they're... Um, uh, like a video security hacker podcast thing. Um, you know, they've got a lot of silly stuff on there, but they were kind enough to make me this. Uh, so this little cable right here is actually uh, host mode built into the cable to USB. Um, Nickerson mentioned this at his talk yesterday, and he called it a crossover cable. That is actually pretty much what it is. Like, it's, the, it's so simple to make. Uh, this thing costs about... 70 cents on Amazon in the in the US it's, it's cheap as hell like it's less than a dollar um, This thing same sort of thing like we ordered them from China at like 70 cents a cable it, They're just easy. It's just a few wires crossed over and the pins are different or something. No big deal but This is awesome because now I can just pretty much be like oh, yeah when I'm at the bar I don't have to bring my laptop to the bar. I could just do this right because I, I Don't know how it is here, but if you brought your bar, or I'm sorry, if you brought your laptop to the bar or a club, people would be a little weirded out by you. They probably wouldn't sit next to you, not because they thought you were, uh, you know, going to hack them. They would probably just be like, this guy's fucking weird. I don't want to be next to this guy. He's got his laptop at a bar. <laughs> so that's what this cable facilitates, right? We want to be able to walk up to someone at a bar without my without your laptop be able to be boop and run everything on there so that's where uh, p2p phone to phone ADB comes in uh, so I mentioned ADB earlier and that's basically Android debug bridge and that allows you a lot of access to the device um, and uh, I built a I'm calling it a framework built a framework that basically runs on your phone it, right now it's in a terminal and there's actually a GUI um, where you just plug in someone's phone, you run a few commands and you're like, oh look at that, I want to steal all of your camera photos. Boop, no big deal. Or, hey, I want to 
I want to steal all of your Google information. So I want to steal all of your offline emails. I want to steal all of your Google Voice data. I want to steal whatever. No big deal. It's awesome. All right. So PDB, ADB, real quick. Uh, so you can steal tons of data, uh, steal camera photos, steal the Google authentication tokens, uh, steal WPA supplicant uh, .conf and then VPN keys and other stuff. And Everybody, you know, WPA supplicant stores all of the Wi-Fi passwords in clear text, so now you can hop on their Wi-Fi and continue to own other things on their, their device. Uh, you can completely disable KeyGuard, which is really easy, and the, the Android API, super nice. It's three lines of code. So like, oh yeah, I'm declaring the KeyGuard unlock class. I'm initiating the class. Please unlock the, 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 the screen for me. No big deal. It's three lines of code. Um, and then, you know, install custom APKs. And um, you could do, uh, I haven't actually done this. That's a lie. I haven't done that. But basically, auto configure proxies or VPNs on the phone. Oh, someone VP messaged me. All right. Uh, so uh, detects root. Um, God, I, this, is, I've, this is old. I already installed some auto root stuff. Um, so basically, uh, from my phone, I can root a few other phones uh, and there's no you know Zerg Rush and uh, the other one and Mempo Dipper it's all just you know runs on Linux and they're all just shell shit or whatever so there's no reason I can't cross compile them to my phone or whatever and get it all working so you could walk around with a phone that roots other phones so even if they have ADB enabled or something or you know you enable ADB for them and you don't have roots so you have a limited access you can just plug it in and be like oh look at that your phone's rooted now which means that I have root on your phone. That's awesome. Uh, cracks the gesture pattern. So, um, you know, the gesture pattern, like I mentioned, is only 390,000 uh, options. Well, fucking 390,000 lines in a file along with their hash. It's only a 20 megabyte file. So I just, like I said, calculated all the potential gestures, and then I just made the equivalent hashes along them. So you don't actually have to crack anything. You just grep the file for those for that hash and then it responds with the uh the code um and then uh i would like to make it uh i'm i'm working on this i'm lazy as hell um i think i mentioned that uh eventual full automation so i just want you to be able to like you know before you plug it into a phone be like oh yeah i want you to steal their google data root their phone or, or root their phone steal their google data uh uh, payload their phone, so I want you to, you know, install a rootkit or whatever, and that's good. And then, you know, when it plugs in, it'll be like, oh, hey, look, I detected a phone, so I'm going to do all these things now without any sort of user interaction. So, it's fun. Uh, so, uh, I made an app called AntiGuard, so KeyGuard, AntiGuard, right? It, it's a cute little name. Um, it installs, basically, you plug it in, it installs, and it unlocks the phone. It's fucking awesome. Um, like I said, it's that three lines of code, which the Android API is all like, oh, this is a good idea to have installed, so we can disable the screen lock for you. Um, and then it has a few little quick launch, whatever. Um, ADB enabled, you're fucked. Like, no big deal. Like, if you, if you have ever left your phone, if your phone has ever lost, you know, went out of your sight while you have ADB enabled, you should just change all your passwords and consider yourself screwed because potentially this could have happened. Um, all right, I don't really care about this stuff. I just want to do the demos. Oh, we're, well, I'm way faster right now. I'm sorry. Really what it is is I'm really hungover or drunk still, so I just want to get this done with. All right, uh, so ADB enabled. So when ADB enabled, uh, ADB is enabled. And, okay, so I get a lot of, I, I get some flack from people going, oh, yeah, you know, we won't, you know, who runs around with ADB enabled on their phone, right? It's like a developer thing. Like, most people don't do that. Well, pretty much anybody that has ever installed a custom ROM has not enabled. Anybody that's a developer has not enabled. Uh, a lot of people have it enabled, right? Uh, and in reality, I want to I wanna target those people. Like, I want to be like, oh, hey, you're a tech guy. You're also the... Uh, tech guy at this company that I want to own. So I'm going to follow you to the bar and then 
I'm going to own your phone at the bar, like when you're not watching. Uh, so basically, grab all the things. Um, Live applications, shit. So browser, passwords, whatever, SMS, uh, Wi Fi password, system, hash, whatever. Um, and then, you know, install a rootkit. And oh, yeah, uh, synced Google account. All right. Uh, so again, ADB, no root. So sometimes you have ADB, ADB enabled, but you don't have root. Or in some, some instances, uh, when you try to gain root, it'll uh, prompt you. So for the people who have rooted with their Android phones, uh, you've probably used the application uh, superuser.apk or supersu.apk, and basically what that does is it prompts you to grant root to the, the application that's running it. So there is some sort of authentication there that, um, you know, prevent random apps from getting root access. So sometimes you, uh, the phone will be like, oh, hey, look, you're trying to request root. Well, I'm going to pop up this little thing and you know you're gonna have to prompt it well if the key the, if key card is enabled if, if the phone is locked you can't you know grant access to root so even though you're not root you can install apks and if you can install apks you can force unlock the screen so you force unlock the screen and you go yes please grant root permission to my script that i'm going to own you with uh, if you don't have a root, you can't access most of the slash data stuff, most of the interesting things at least. But you can grab, grab data, you know, photos, you can grab some data on the SD card. Um, you can install APKs, like I said, and um, fun little stuff. Uh, install CA certificates, so if you want a man in the middle of them or install a proxy, you can just start doing all that. Uh, and then, you know, through the Android API, the Android API is great, like, you know, all the stuff in slash data slash data, which is where all your application data is stored, most of that is uh, not readable by you. So you need to either be that application that owns that data, or you need to be the root user to access that data. And you know, if you're not root, you're screwed. However, the Android API gives you access to that data. So if, if you install your APK that exports text messages and contacts and whatever you can just be like oh yeah hit a button all of your text messages are being backed up through the android uh, api and now you have their text messages without having root uh, and then like i mentioned a few times the synced google account uh, so the your account information is stored in data system accounts and it's only readable by the system user it's only readable by root um, but it has these really really nice little tokens in there that are basically authentication tokens, and they are your Google account. I'm gonna show you why in just a second. So they're just in a, it's a little SQLite database with uh, you know queried or whatever. Uh, so when you do that, oh fuck this. Who wants to do demos? This is much more fun. My bat laptop is about to die. I'm sorry. I'm gonna plug it in real quick. Oh man. So uh, we have Wi-Fi access, right? I'm not going to get owned over Wi-Fi, am I? Eh, whatever. I probably will. I know some guy was uh, mad in the middle in it last yesterday. What a dick. I just fuck with you. I don't want really to give a shit. <laughs> um, Howard, you are going to see me modify some stuff because... Uh, so I, since I did this a few days ago um, at another conference that, like I mentioned, was... I can't say this on video, but anyway, um, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to use my own Google account, so this is going to suck for me, but oh well, I think that's my Google account. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, Yahoo, there you go. All right, so we're going to do email, HTTPS, that's good, not logged in. <laughs> Actually, while we're at this, I think I, uh, yeah, OK, cool. Is it, isn't dash K the one to ignore HTTP? Whatever, I'm going to shit. <clears throat> 
again, I don't usually do this. Uh, I'm usually plugged into um, the cellular network, but I don't have that here. And I trust the cellular network more than I trust this network. So let me disable all the stuff that ignores security. <laughs> all right. Um, so I have a device right here, right? Let's fix this aspect ratio. So this is the, the Galaxy Nexus. Um, and it, or I'm sorry, not the, the Galaxy Nexus. God, I'm so... This is the... <laughs> well, I mean, at least I figured it out before we started, right? Oh, apparently my camera doesn't work anymore. Oh man, this will suck if I have to use the front facing camera. I tried that once. Not fun. There we go. Okay, cool. Reset. We're good. A plus plus with camera again. No, I'm not gonna record you people. Actually, uh at the conference that I was at, I kept on picking up my tablet and then the whole audience was buying, and every time I picked it up, everybody started laughing, and I'm like, why are you all laughing? And the guys in the front row were like, uh. It didn't matter, though, because that conference was shitty. I mean, hold on. I, can you cut that out of the video? They probably want me back, because I'm awesome. Just kidding. <clears throat> all right, so you have your little tablet right here, right? And we're going to use this, and you know, this has tons of stuff right there, whatever. Um, then we have my app, so we're going to go ahead and SH, there we go. So this is PWADB, um, it's just a bunch of shell scripts, like, I'm serious, it's the only binaries I included, um, are a few things to just make some people happy because some people didn't read the prerequisites, so I just threw in a few binaries so I would stop getting emails from people saying, I can't run this, why can't I run this? And Anyway, uh, so first of all, uh, one of the prerequisite things was, um, so this used to not work against stock devices because uh, there's some stupid BS with uh, P2P or with ADB that prevents you from doing a few things. So basically, um, I threw a busy box onto the device, and uh, BusyBox isn't like a toolkit of just like core utilities, whatever, and, and I need some of that. So I throw on BusyBox, which is great. And since uh, my device is rooted, it goes, oh, check that out, we're root, this is awesome. Like, hell yeah, this is great. So, uh, what do you wanna do? Hey, well, I mean, again, I'll, I'll go ahead and check, we'll recheck if we're root, and it's all like, Oh yeah, uh, so not natively root will continue escalating privileges with the sue binary. That's awesome. Um, and, and, you know, devices don't have root, it'll be like, oh yeah, you know, limited functionality, whatever, that sucks. Uh, <clears throat> so, while we're here, like, let's just steal all of your application data. Oh yeah, calculating the size of, oh wow, unexpected operator. I think I broke it yesterday. Uh, Calculating the size of the shared preferences in databases folder. That's awesome. All of them. I can pull down all of your application data right now. And that means that I own you pretty much. Oh, damn it. I broke it last night. I was on a plane. Uh, I didn't get any sleep at all. And I decided that I should start trying to code some stuff. That's a bad idea. Um, so again, you know, app data. But maybe I don't want all your app data because some of your app, you may have some, you know, stupid apps. I don't care. I don't want your, you know, uh, Angry Birds say game saves. I just want your every, you know, I want the good stuff. So we're gonna steal your Google application data, and it's like, oh, yo dog, you know, there's your com dot google dot asterisk shared preferences and databases. So this is your offline e. This is your offline email. This is your um, do you need, I know I know it's like not a th thing here, but do you need to use Google Voice? I, some of you might use it just because you can contact to people, um, uh, whatever. Okay, Google Voice is awesome. I'm sorry that you don't have it all. Um, you know, you get all the good Google stuff, like the the stuff that link is linked to your account. Um, and then uh, you know, steal camera photos because. Everybody knows what ty type of photos people take with their phone. Um, <clears throat> steal accounts, which we're going to do in just a little bit. 
And then um, let's uh, let's just fucking disable keyguard. So here's my little thing. I don't I don't even know my password. Oh, oh man, I forgot my password. You know, uh, fuck that shit. We're just gonna be like, no, I don't. Oh, oops, wrong, wrong one. Oh, that would suck. <laughs> Sorry. Mistyped. Oh, let's just uh, fucking do this thing. Yeah. Woo! Completely ignore whatever. And the cool thing is, that's all. That's all. API stuff like that's in the documentation like oh hey by the way if you want to disable the interface do this thing and then this you know these three lines of code it's awesome um, and you know from there you can just be like oh yeah I just want to you know I want to read your text messages now or or even better I'm gonna start you know going installing and configuring proxies or whatever but you know if you're installing shit already you probably don't need to do that and the nice thing about that is you just run it again and uh, it just locks your screen again. It, you, once you uninstall it, there's you know there's like a few lines in the log data that gets wiped when you re reboot your phone, but otherwise it's totally you know unnoticeable, which is awesome. Uh, there is a I do have some root functionality in there, so if you're running like 4.0 to 4.1.1 or something, and uh, uh, like running a Galaxy Nexus or the Nexus 7 or whatever. It can root devices. Again, like I said, uh, the only thing preventing me from throwing on other roots is that um, I'm really lazy. So, oh well. Um, and I don't have an unlock pattern right now. But if you have an unlock pattern, so remember how I said there are only 390,000? That's a really small amount in, in reality. Uh, so what I do is you just go in and you, you, you grep the hash file against a file that I have. And it's all like... Oh yeah, by the way, here's your unlock code. So the unlock code, I'm sorry, here's your gesture pattern. The the unlock uh the gesture pattern isn't salted. Um the all this stuff, you know, the 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 pin and the password are or they have a salt. So it's, you know, it's and it's really big. It's like uh 8 8 bytes or something. So that makes it pretty infeasible even if they have a a, a pretty small pa oh, actually, I take that back. It's yeah, pretty infeasible, even if they have a small password, um, to generate, you know, a list or a rainbow table or whatever, and that's why we have salts. Um, but the gesture and pattern, actually, I'm going to enable it right now because that shit's cool. <clears throat> and then i got to disable it after. One of, one of my, uh, my own things, and I'm going to show you some mitigation tactics in a little bit, is I always forget to, um, <laughs> oh, whoa, what? Encryption policy. I must have got drunk last night and encrypted this or something. Um, <clears throat> one of the uh, the mitigation things I'm going to show you is um, how, to, like, just, you know, I, I forget to disable ADB all the time because I'm always doing Android shit. I use it. I, it's like a security or a research platform made for me. And it's, um, oh, I got to get some water. And, you know, it's just fun all around. I use it so much. I do a little bit of development on it. So I always forget to disable ADB. Well, again, ADB is hard to remember to disable. Don't I? Ah, uh, 10 minutes left. All right, so I just enabled the gesture and pattern. And I don't even, what is it? I don't even know. I wasn't even paying attention when I made it. So we're just going to be like, oh, yeah, get the gesture and pattern, please. Oh, look at that. Gesture and pattern is 0, oh, oop, 0, 1, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8. Oh, God, that's a hard gesture and pattern. You know, you could never crack that because that's like really long, right? No, uh, zero, one, two, four, six, seven, eight. Oh, look at that. There's your gesture pattern. Really easy. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of stupid, really. It's, I don't know why they don't salt it like the, the password and the pen. Like, it seems like that would be a smart thing to do. But they just throw the SHA-1 hash into a file without any salt and call it good. It's, I, I'm not sure why. All right. Now, now I'm going to screw myself over. So we're going to go ahead and hit number five, uh, steal accounts. <laughs> this sucks because this is going to reset all of my passwords across all my devices. So I'm going to have to go back and... Do it all. 
Um, oh shit, you know what? Actually, I can't even do that on that account. I just realized. Uh, yeah, I, I apologize for not doing this earlier. Um, I hate every single one of you that was at the party last night. This is I blame you all as to why I need to uh, do this. Um, what am I trying to do right now? <clears throat> oh. 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 Unrar. <laughs> Untar. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm, I give up, I don't even, uh, yeah, I'm going to do this because otherwise you're going to get my uh, secret tokens. Secret why? Uh, you know, I don't feel comfortable with that, so I'm going to do this for a second. <laughs> no offense um, at all, <laughs> but I don't trust any of you. <laughs> <laughs> and you know why. <laughs> All right, uh, let's do my, which one? Uh, we'll do my one email that has my Twitter account shit, because that's uh, conference friendly. All right, so that is number eight. Uh, I'm sorry, so let's, All right. Oh, we're good. All right, I have a few few seconds left, so I don't need to do this anymore. Uh, same as other windows. To ignore the video. Huh? Okay, so basically this is the quick script. You know, it's stupid simple or whatever. So um, actually I haven't tested this because uh, someone edited it and was all like, Yo, dog, I fixed it for you, so hopefully this works. We're good. Um, I think we do that. So we're going to grab, uh, and, and this is just limited. This is actually more of like a, a proof of concept than it is like an actual attack script because it basically is going to cool you, show cool you, cool, show you cool shit. Whatever. Fuck this shit. I'm done. I'm going home. Uh, so we want to throw it in loot. Generate off. So I think this is the most recent one, right? Yes. Uh, oh. Oh, fuck. Oh. Our, uh, fuck. There we go. I fucked up on something, so you. Like I said, proof of concept file. This isn't anything. All right. So, okay. So what this does is I, I showed you this slide earlier. Um, Real quick. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, I'm way behind. I'm really drunk still. Um, Google account. Do this shit. Well, you know, this shit's right there. And, you know, you make this request. And suddenly you uh, get this giant fucking URL. Uh, what this giant URL is basically um, a single sign-on token. So the single sign-on token is awesome because fucking love single sign-on. It's great. Whatever. Click this shit. You're all like, uh, yo, dog, what, is, what, is, what does this do? What, what, what is this? I don't even... Check that out! It just logged me to my account without entering a password. That's awesome. <laughs> so, so that's great. Like, okay, but say you really fucking hate the guy that you're doing this with, right? And you just want to be like, okay, so you have their token, and then you just can kind of browse around their account. Really? Oh, damn it! Everything's fucking. I don't even. What is this language? God damn it! Sorry, <laughs> I just fuck with you. Uh, you know, like, all right, cool. I'm like in an account somewhere, whatever, uh, this is great. Now I can just access their account over and over again. Like, I can steal everything. I can go to Gmail. I can, you know, do whatever the hell I want. Not a big deal. So, yeah, so look at that. I'm on Gmail. You're not going to read my emails, though, because, like I said, it's going to fuck me over after. Uh, but what if you really want to just kind of piss off the guy? Like, what if you want to, maybe you want to piss him off. Maybe you want to ruin him. Maybe you want to do whatever. I'm just going to... I really just want to take over his account. So uh, let's change his password. Oh, man. Current password? I don't know what his password is because I have his token. That's no fun. But, oh, hey, check it out. 
Oh, wait. Oh, this is my phone number. If you want to... Oh, that's my real phone number. Damn it. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is like a backup account, so I don't even care. Uh, so you're all like, cool, I'm just going to, you know, change his phone number so then I can do that. Well, you know, or I'm going to change his recovery address so I can do that. Again, it's a backup account for AOL or whatever. Please don't hack me. Um, so I'm just going to use his recovery address or change his email address. That's awesome. So then I could just change it to me and do that. Or, hey, look at a security question. Check that out. Oh, I'm gonna <gasps> I can edit his security question. Uh, remember that for me? Cause, uh, okay. Actually, no, don't remember that. Anybody that has their laptop out, like you, sir, in the front row, I'm going to have to ask you to stop what you're doing. Oh, your account information has been fucking updated. Sweet. So I'm going to go to, oh, I can't do that. Uh, I'm going to go to, we're going to open up a new browser window. And we're going to go to Gmail in the new browser window. Oh, look at, you know, whatever. Don't know your password. Cool. Can't access this account. Oh, I don't, I don't even, what is my password? I don't know. I don't know my, I don't know your password. So I want to go down and reset. Okay, I can get a text message. I can change the phone number. I can change the email address. Or, uh, you know, what's your security question? That's nice, right? And, uh, yeah. So, based on that token, you know, you can pretty much, and that's one of the things that I iterate, like, I try to tell people when they're like, oh, you know, whatever Android phone, or, you know, my phone only has a little bit of information on it. No, like, I get your whole Google account. Like, I get everything you are done with. Like, I take over your Google account, whatever. No big deal, right? Uh, so one of the um, fun things. Oh shit, my time is up. Okay, we're gonna run through this real quick. I'm sorry. Like I said, you fuck you all for the last night. Um, so one of the fun things is this completely bypasses two-factor authentication. There's, it doesn't matter. You can control. You can make application-specific passwords because this is your, this is an application-specific password. This is a token. Shit doesn't matter. You win. Uh, own your shit. Uh, getting Google account without root, basically HTTPS proxy plus doing a few other things, uh, CA cert, you can basically just steal the same token that's, I mean, th this request was taken from opening up the browser and hitting auto log into your Gmail account. So it's, it's dumb simple to grab it if you have access or a proxy or whatever. Uh, let's see, uh, what else? Uh, if you have their Google account and you, you know, add it to your phone, with the password or with the whatever, uh, it restores all of your Wi-Fi passwords from the cloud in clear text. So you can grab all of their Wi-Fi passwords from the cloud and add it to your device, which is nice. Um, and you know, a few other shit that's restored. Um, uh, mention not root, there, there's a root exploit in there or whatever. Um, you, there are more that can be added uh, and it's only been, whatever, minorly tested. I did the demo because uh, I'm dumb. Uh, so other attack vectors, there's a guy named Lay or Riverside that do this called juice jacking at, uh, the, at DEF CON. Basically, they made this little blue box where they have charge ports and people plug in their phone to charge their phone. And then it, and then it shows their device ID on there. <laughs> uh, so I was like, hey, why don't I just fucking throw some logic in there to own your shit? And that's cool. Uh, another attack vector though, dude, computers are small nowadays and they can be run off of batteries. So why don't I just throw it into a little energizer pack, right? And rip out one of the cells and replace the cell with the, the, the tiny little computer. That's awesome. You guys like video games? Fuck, hey, look at this. Here's a uh, Xbox controller. You hear if you plug this into your phone, you can play video games on your phone with the Xbox controller. Oh, by the way, I just, I kind of replaced the internals of the Xbox controller with that and tiny computer, it's awesome. Uh, future shit, doesn't matter. Um, this guy, if you, if you guys don't like shell or whatever, but if you have root on your phone, uh, there's a guy named uh, Cornholio that uh, 
Everybody laughs at that. I don't know why. Uh, that It's just a native app, whatever, cool. You hit buttons, and it does cool shit. It basically, he took all my shit and threw it inside of an app. It's awesome. Check it out. It's open source. Uh, mitigation. Uh, stop fucking things. Like, don't root your phone. It's dumb. I'm just joking. It's awesome. Like, root your phone. That's great. Um, disable ADB when you're done, whatever. Lock bootloader if you can. Uh, flash stock recovery image. Enable encryption. And then, uh, I don't know if any of you recognize this, but... Uh, <laughs> Glue your phone to your hand. <laughs> if any of you recognize that, it's a reboot. It's a small little video where they own an iPhone with a Windows exploit. It's great. Um, <laughs> mitigation, ADBD secure, which uh, some guy, BusyBox, package manager, it's open source. Basically, when you turn your f lock your screen, it locks the phone. And when you unlock your screen, or, wow, that was fucking retarded. When you lock the screen, it turns off ADB. When you unlock the screen, it turns on ADB, which is kind of a cool thing, right? So it's useful. Uh, that's over. Uh, I'm good. Thank you all. Uh, all the code is up at my GitHub, chaosborn, uh, cause.io, the cause on Twitter, my company and shit, whatever. Done. Thank you. Oh. Uh, one fun thing, uh, if you use ADB, uh, I'm sorry, if you use P2P ADB, uh, XDA developers called P2P, oh, if I can find it, XDA developers, they, they called P2P ADB a, um, oh, fuck this shit, a malicious toolkit forwarded by ADBD Secure. So they wrote an article about how I'm an evil hacker and how ADBD, if you want to be cool, a malicious toolkit by me was found in the wild by XDA developers. Anyway, that's all I got. Goodbye. Don't hack my shit, please.